Welcome to Giving Back This Week. I'm Aaron Throckmorton. This week we're up in Alaska hunting grizzly bear with my good friend Dylan Hodges. We got to see some amazing country on the way into the lodge, you know, flying in that day. Once we got in there, we got all settled in, and in typical Alaska fashion, the rain set in. That first night we just spent in the lodge, we got to meet all the guides, we got to meet some of the other hunters, and kind of got our gear prepared, because the next day we were flying into a remote cabin where we would then start our grizzly hunt. That main lodge is incredible. It's really big, it's roomy, um, they have an on-site chef, and you can sit there and overlook the lake while you're having your coffee or, or having your drinks at night. Bad at all. Dylan and I were able to fly into camp that day before the rain set in. But Pepe, one of the hunters who was staying with us, he wanted to hunt that night. So he decided to go with his guide and hike in and then row in. Unfortunately, the rain hit right as they were rowing into camp. Well, we're here in Alaska and um, hunting grizzly bears this trip. You know, I've been here before. I was here about 10 years ago with my dad and my dad got a beautiful grizz. Not far from here, actually. Um, we're, we're not in the same area, but we're close. And so I'm excited to be back here. Uh, we flew into camp or to the main lodge yesterday. Uh, today we flew out to our spike camp and our hunt starts tomorrow. So it's been raining a lot here, but uh, the fish, I guess, are, or, or the salmon are spawning. So we're hoping that the bears are going to be on the creek and um, with a great group of guys up here. You know, we got Dylan up here, 18 years old, um, just absolutely loves hunting. Um, his dad sends him on some hunts. His dad doesn't even hunt, but he supports his, his passion and his hobbies, which I think is great. So um, another great guy from Spain, Pepe, uh, super great guy, hunts all over the world. And uh, a couple great guides here. We got Scott, we got Tony, and uh, it's going to be a fantastic 10 days. Um, wish us luck. A monster, absolutely a monster. What was his yeah. dimensions? And the shyness, the shyness he shot was absolute My name is Dylan Hodges. I am from Manteca, California. How I got into hunting, my dad was a big fisherman. Always fish salmon runs, always go to Oregon. And my next door neighbor was a big fisherman too, so he was like, oh yeah, go go take your hunting safety's thing. And I was like, oh yeah, sure, whatever, I'll go take it. And I did, I passed, and I went on my first pig hunt in Union City, California. I got successful on that one. I got a pretty nice pig. But yeah, ever since that, I've just been hunting all, hunting all of the United States. That first full day, we actually just kind of stayed around camp and got all of our gear ready. It also gave our head guide, Scotty, a chance to show off all of his culinary skills. Yeah. What are you going to do? Just have to have fun. Have a good time. Animal hey, hey, <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> hey, 
hey girl, don't leave me alone. <laughs> That's the proof that he wasn't born. <laughs> and he has a little reggae little hat. It's cute. The reggae hat, it's a, it's a, it's a head thing. It's weird, it's like a hood one. <laughs> ready to roll. Okay, good luck. All right, good luck, boys. See you, See you guys tonight. After having a late lunch and that little short impromptu concert from Dylan, we were then going to head down to the river to start our hunt. Giving Back is brought to you by Hammer Bullets. Advanced technology, simply better. Safari Taxidermy, preserving the memory of your hunt for over 40 years. German Precision Optics, exceptional optics at an exceptional value. Kenetrek Boots, for the trail less traveled. Monster Camo, your off-road hunting gear. Magnus Broadheads, superior quality and outstanding performance. When it comes time to book your dream hunt, give True Flight Adventures a call. With years of experience and partnerships with the top outfitters around the world, their adventure consultants will make sure you get the hunting experience you're looking for. They'll take time to work with you to design a hunt specifically to your needs, and their service is always free for their clients. True Flight Adventures, your source for hunting and adventure travel all around the globe. Hammer Bullets. Custom designed lead free bullets with superior accuracy, ensuring minimal game waste. Our new parabolic drag reduction technology reduces pressure and friction, resulting in higher velocity. Our PDR technology allows versatility and seating depth, making it the easiest bullet on the market to load develop with superior accuracy and terminal performance. Go to hammerbullets.com to learn more. Welcome back you guys. We're up in Alaska hunting grizzly bear. After a couple days of rain, the weather finally broke so we were able to head down to the river. Right on. So we're gonna head down this trail about a mile, go down to the river where the salmon are running and uh, sit on the bank and wait for a hungry bear to come up through. Right. Hopefully you're gonna get a pretty close shot. It's pretty tight. And other than the bugs biting us, it's gonna be about the Scariest thing that's gonna happen because you're gonna shoot them and we'll be done for the night uh, You uh, you confident with that 4570? Yeah, I'm pretty confident. Just a big big bullet. Yeah, pretty confident Just hit him back in the lungs yeah. behind the shoulder. Sounds good Let's sure. get it done. Get it done. That's right. That's what we're here for, right? Yeah So our strategy on this hunt was to go down to the river and just sit back in the brush a little bit. The fish were starting to spawn, so we were hoping the bears would come out and feed on these fish to give us an opportunity at a grizzly. Those 
those first couple nights were actually really slow. We didn't see anything. But the third night we headed out, our hopes were still high, and we were hoping tonight would produce some action. Night number three. And uh, it's been slow, but um, salmon are starting to run. We've seen quite a few, so we're just waiting for the bears to show up. So it is super hot right now. And the mosquitoes are terrible, but it's all right. We're heading into the stand and uh, kind of sit till dark. We just need one bear. You know, Scotty had told us that typically these bears like to come out between 9 and 10 o'clock, you know, a little bit later on in the evening. We got down there on night three and we were still getting set up when we looked down the river and a grizzly was coming right towards us. Again. I can't. Man, that happened so fast. I mean, that grizzly caught all of us off guard. You know, we got down there, Dylan made a shot, and we didn't realize in the heat of the moment that his gun had jammed. Um, so we actually felt that the first shot was good, so we gave the bear a little bit of time and then started to track. You know, we tracked that bear through all that brush for over three hours. I mean, there were times we were crawling on our hands and knees looking for blood. And I can tell you, that's an eerie feeling being in brush that thick with a wounded grizzly bear. Come back here. Right behind us. Yeah, behind you. taken the trophy of a lifetime and you want it preserved for life. Since 1978, Safari Taxidermy has been capturing the essence of the hunt, one trophy at a time. With meticulous attention to detail, Safari Taxidermy guarantees a product as close to the original animal as possible, and they have a proud export record to destinations all over the world. Hammer bullets, custom designed lead free bullets with superior accuracy, ensuring minimal game waste. Our new parabolic drag reduction technology reduces pressure and friction, resulting in higher velocity. Our PDR technology allows versatility and seating depth, making it the easiest bullet on the market to load develop with superior accuracy and terminal performance. Go to hammerbullets.com to learn more. When it comes time to book your dream hunt, 
give True Flight Adventures a call. With years of experience and partnerships with the top outfitters around the world, their adventure consultants will make sure you get the hunting experience you're looking for. They'll take time to work with you to design a hunt specifically to your needs, and their service is always free for their clients. True Flight Adventures, your source for hunting and adventure travel all around the globe. Based on the small amount of blood that we found and tracking him that long, we unfortunately came to the realization that that shot of Dylan's was a non-lethal shot. So I was able to come back in September since I still had my grizzly tag, but the strategy this time would be a little different. We were going to set up spike camps in the tents at a little higher elevation and focus on the hillsides with the berry patches. Well, we made it up to a vantage spot where we can kind of see this big hillside here and there's berries on it and there's some brush and it just looks like a great crossing area but the rain's come in so we got the got the rain gear on and we're just kind of hunkered down right now so we're gonna sit here for a while I think it's I think the weather's breaking we didn't film a lot on the way up because it was raining so we kept the camera under wraps and um, now we're here we are really blessed to be able to do this we were just talking about that that so many people don't get to come out and experience this kind of stuff and we're, we're, we're very lucky. So we're gonna take the morning, do some glassing and see if we can uh, spot a grizz to go after. The first day was actually a little slow. You know, we did see that black bear off in a distance, saw some caribou, but really that's all we saw. The next day, the weather was actually calling for less rain, but more wind. So it's been kind of a slow day today. Um, this morning we went back down below camp and we sat, oh, for about four, four or five hours. We did not see one animal. It, the wind has really been howling up here. You can see now by the glare on my face that the sun is out, um, but the wind does not let up. So I think it's keeping the animals close to the trees and the bushes and everything like that. But what we decided to do tonight was walk above camp. So we came up we can see this big basin here. Um, this is where we saw the three black bears the other night and a handful of caribou. So we're gonna sit up here uh, most of the evening and just see if we can catch a grizz out feeding. That's really the only chance we have um, right now, but it's been a slow day. But you know, like they say in Alaska, it can happen fast. So that's what we're hoping for. All right, we've been here day, it's day five now, been in here. Um, we have not seen a grizz, so they're pulling us out today. We're gonna go back to the lodge, shower up, and just kind of get everything organized, fresh clothes, all that good stuff, and then hit another camp. So, had a great camp in here, a great few days anyway, just no grizz activity. So we're gonna move and uh, stay tuned. We'll see what happens in the next camp.
All right, we made it up to camp number two. We actually stayed in the in the main lodge last night. Uh, Dan got out a little bit late. You know, the pilots were running all over the place yesterday. So we decided to stay in, you know, shower up, wash some clothes, kind of regroup a little bit. Came out this afternoon uh, to this camp. We're in a beautiful location. We can see for miles. The colors are changing. Um, it's awesome out here. So we're excited. So what Dan and I are going to do tonight is just kind of stay around camp. We flew in today, so legally we cannot hunt today. So we can do some scouting and that's about it. So. We're just kind of actually pretty close to camp, but we can see forever. So we're just going to glass till dark, you know, cook dinner at the camp tonight. And then tomorrow we're just packing our packs and we're going to go from dark to dark. We're going to go out and try and locate a grizz and uh, get on him. There's a bunch of berry patches up higher. So we're going to get up there tomorrow, kind of get hunkered down. Um, it might be a little windy tomorrow and uh, just do a lot of glass. And, you know, we have yet to see a bear, but couple people in camp have got a bear and so they're moving so our uh, our spirits are high we're excited to be out here and like we say we're really blessed to be able to do this all the time and um, never take this for granted that next morning we were up pretty early because we were excited about this new camp location Dan and I headed out and got to an area where we could see one big hillside that was full of berries, as long as kind of a bottom that, that held some water in it. And our hopes were high that day. We'd been there all morning long and, and really hadn't seen an animal. And then right around midday, we saw our very first grizzlies of this trip. Dan and I got up pretty early this morning, um, hiked into this big valley. We were here by uh, before sunrise, thinking we'd catch all these bears out feeding this morning, and yeah, that wasn't happening. We didn't see a bear um, all morning long, so the sun came out. It's super hot today, so we decided to just kind of stay here on the hillside and take a nap. And I woke up, and at 1.30 we saw two grizz, so who knew? Um, they were out feeding on some berries, and Got some really cool footage. It was a sow and a cub, so obviously they, neither one could be hunted, but still a really cool experience. So we uh, videoed them for a while, they fed off, and now we're gonna sit here all afternoon and hope that we see one shooter boar and find a suntan lotion stand because <laughs> the sun is brutal. But uh, Alaska, September 11th, and we're getting sunburns. Go figure. We headed back to that same location. You know, that sow and cub was neat to see, but we knew there were more grizzlies in the area. And wouldn't you know it, around midday, we saw a monster bear, but he was a long ways away. You know, we tried to cut the distance as quickly as we could, but moving through that tundra and moving through that thick brush, there was just no way we could catch up to that bear. All right, end of today. And we, uh, man, we saw a pretty good grizz about noon. We seen, we've seen these bears <coughs> in the middle of the day, but um, we just couldn't get on him. We went down to where he was at and, uh, I don't know, he was, he put the slip on us, so. Um, anyway, cool day, saw some moose this morning. Um, 
saw that big bear, just couldn't get on him the rest of the day, not much of anything, so we're uh, tired today. Heading back to camp and uh, get kind of a late dinner and um, just relax a little bit, hit it tomorrow. I think we're getting pulled out Friday, so give her give her good effort tomorrow and see if luck's on our side. When we got back to base camp that night, we got a message from the main lodge and they were saying that there was a storm coming in. So unfortunately, that was the end of our hunt. We were getting pulled out the very next morning. Thank you for watching Giving Back this week. Tune in next week when we're back in South Africa following two good friends on their first safari together.